All right, folks. I want to welcome you all to the 2022 awards banquet. First of all, how about we all just give ourselves a round of applause for being here tonight? Awesome. Thank you guys for showing up. I want to thank our awards ceremony sponsors, APSCO, DN Tanks, Jacobs, Leeway, Mead and Hunt, Parametrics, Reiner Pump Systems, RH2, Stantec, Tetra Tech, and TO Engineers. Thank you so much for sponsoring tonight's dinner. And the two drink tickets. <laughs> Kidding. Okay. All right. Some of you are here for dinner, some to support the person or organization, or maybe it's for another reason. But my goal is that tonight you feel pride in our organization and have a little fun. So I've had the honor of working with the awards committee this year, chaired by Matt Nason. This committee worked diligently to solicit nominations and review and select the outstanding award winners we have tonight. So a word about committee chairs. We came up with a concept in the awards committee this year called chair years, which are kind of like dog years. So we figured for each year you're a chair, it feels like about seven. So for Matt, chair of the awards committee, that means something like 10 years. Meow Meow on the sustainability committee, I figured it's something like two decades. And Bud Ruther with the 5S, I figure he started just after we invented primary clarifiers. <laughs> the point of this is that our committees run uh, our, and committee leadership make up the association and make the association run, right? The work that happens within the association happens in the committees and the committee chairs are there to help make those committees work. So I know Rob asked us to do this at the opening session, but just another uh, huge thank you to all the folks who show up for committee meetings, who volunteered for the committees, um, and the committee chairs who put in extra effort to make sure that those things are running. And what's the first rule of being a committee chair? Anyone who attended our training earlier this year? Pick your vice chair, right? Sometimes that's called uh, bawling telling. Uh, but anyway, Folks are all champions to me, okay? I think that's awesome. We had the most nominations we've ever received and we continue to see an increase in caliber of nominations each year. Please keep them coming. We can't all be Freddie Mercury, but we can all be a champion. All right. We want the ceremony to be a celebration of our membership. We've provided some information about the award and the winners on the screen. So I'm not gonna make this a long winded read everything. So I'll encourage you to put your glasses on or your binoculars if you're in the back and read the screens because that will have the information about the award winners. Okay, so without fuller, further ado, our awards. The first is the quarter century club. So these are the PNCWA and WEF awards. So these are national awards. And they want to recognize, uh, acknowledges those who have been a member of WEF or a WEF member association for 25 consecutive years. And this year we have Mr. Robert Dillard, who's the recipient of that award. Now, this award gets mailed out directly by WEF. So um, I don't know if Robert is here tonight. Don't think so. But anyway, so a little, a little short round of applause for Robert. Quarter century. Awesome. Love it. Okay. All right. Our next group is the Stockholm Junior Water Prize winners. The prize is awarded to the most prestigious youth award for a water-related science project. The prize taps into the unlimited potential of today's high school students as they seek to address current and future water challenges. This year, our student state representatives to the national competition were from Idaho, Taryn Godfrey, Grangeville High School. Go Grangeville. I don't know what their uh, I don't know what their mascot is. We should find out. Okay. 
uh, from Oregon, Grace Sato from West Lynn High School. And from Washington, watch me butcher this, Monisha Pathopoli. I'm gonna say that's how a Montanan says a Greek name. So we'll just see how that works out. Anyway, she's from uh, um, the Tesla STEM school in Redmond, Washington. Our next award is the Arthur Sidney Bedell Award. The Bedell Award acknowledges extraordinary personal service to PNC PNCWA. Um, and it was um, named for Mr. Bedell, who was a stalwart of, the, of uh, NIWEA. So great honor uh, to present this year's award to Mr. Mark Poling. <laughs> okay, our next award is the Laboratory Analyst Excellence Award for outstanding performance and contributions to the water quality analysis profession. This year's Laboratory Analyst Excellence Award goes to Ms. Kayla Brown. Awesome. Yay. Okay. Next award is the William D. Hatfield Award. This is presented to operators of wastewater treatment plants for outstanding performance and professionalism. This year's award goes to Ms. Justine Abrook. Congrats. Thank you. All right, the George W. Burke Award. Safety is our DNA at PNCWA, and the Burke Award recognizes a municipal or industrial wastewater facility that has gone above and beyond. This year's award goes to the city of Vancouver, Washington. Bobby Hammond, recipient. Okay, now we'll move on to the PNCWA awards. This year, our individual distinguished achievement award is presented to a PNCWA member who is most deserving of special recognition as a result of distinguished service rendered in the interest of pollution abatement or resource recovery. This year's award winner is Aaron Camp. Okay, let's hear it for Idaho, Coeur d'Alene, Rock On. Okay, got my number to click. Our Outstanding Young Professional of the Year recognizes the contribution of young professionals for significant contributions to the PNCWA. This year's award winner is Jamie Hughes. It's Jamie and Desi. Our next award is the, click the button, Lyman Ketchum Award. 
for outstanding contributions in the field of wastewater collection system maintenance and operations. This year's award goes to Mr. Jeff Schmidt. All right, our Stormwater Professional Excellence Award. The Stormwater Professional Excellence Award recognizes individuals for outstanding performance, professionalism, and contributions to the stormwater profession. This year's award goes to Mr. Juan Ron Wairinga. Congratulations. Okay, now we have some project awards. The Innovative Stormwater Project Award recognizes innovative stormwater solutions. The project deserving of this award is the Pringle Creek Project for the Butternut Creek Clean Water, I'm sorry, of Clean Water Services. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. The Municipal Water Protection Award, this award publicly recognizes municipalities or groups of municipalities that have gone above and beyond to control or prevent water pollution. The agency deserving this award is the Georgetown Wet Weather Treatment Station, King County, Washington. We have a group coming out. Okay. Didn't click it back. Sorry. Read quickly. <laughs> okay, the next award is the Sustainability Award. This award recognizes and encourages projects that showcase sustainable design elements completed by PNCWA members. This year's award winner is the Tri City Solids Handling Capacity Improvements for Clackamas WES in Oregon. Okay, let me take a breath here. An energy guy. Did anyone see those numbers up there? Love it. Okay. Our next award is the Excellence in Resource Recovery Award. This award recognizes resource recovery programs that demonstrate outstanding performance in moving the concept of resource recovery forward in the Pacific Northwest region. This year's award goes to the Metropolitan Wastewater Management Commission, MWMC, Renewable Natural Gas Project in Eugene Springfield, Oregon. Another project that makes an energy guy very happy. Yay. Hmm. Okay. Change my page too quick. 
apologies. The next award is the Watermark Award for Communications Excellence. Now, this is a new award, first time this year. Uh, recognizes PNCWA members who have produced top quality education and communication programs or projects. The award recognizes efforts to improve awareness in PNC PNCWA communities and organizations about the value of water and wastewater management across the Pacific Northwest. This year, this brand new award goes to the Watershed Vision Book, City of Boise, Idaho. <laughs> Let's hear some more for Idaho. This year we were able to enjoy another ops challenge with some new teams and I want to give a special shout out to Chris Nicholas, who has done so much to keep this event going. Uh, to talk about this year's event, please welcome Mike Anderson from the city of Coeur d'Alene. Thank you, and thank you, Chris, for leaving me to talk about the uh, operations challenge. Um, it's something that's very near and dear to me. Um, it's my first year of being involved in it with the city of Coeur d'Alene. And uh, we were just uh, very excited to be a part of it. So I'm excited to be here to talk to you about it. But really, we owe it all to the Operations Challenge uh, teams of Coeur d'Alene and the city of Bend. Um, they practice all year long <clears throat> for this uh, conference. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, hours that go in uh, into practicing for this. There were not only the, uh, the teams that are competing that you saw out there, but they're also in charge of logistics, setting everything up. Uh, there's a ton of effort that goes into it. So uh, if I could have the teams please stand for a, a, a round of applause. <clears throat> if you would like to be applauded next year, we would like to encourage you to uh, get a team together uh, it, it truly was a ton of fun, everything that I anticipated it being and more. So if you're interested in getting your team together, we've got a lot of resources. I simply logged on to PNCWA and, and you can uh, see the Ops Challenge Board, reach out to Chris, easy to get a hold of. There's a ton of resources and, uh, and, and it's, a, a, it's a blast. So thank you very much for that. And uh, lastly, I would like to present the teams with their awards. And this year's second place winner is, thanks, that's pretty good. Uh, City of Coeur d'Alene, please come on up. <laughs> and our first place winner is the city of Bend, Oregon. Come on up. Thank you very much. Yeah. Our next set of awards are for the operators and collection operators of the year. Every year, our regions in Idaho, Oregon, Eastern and Western Washington select individuals to receive the operator and collections operator of the year awards. These are some of our top-notch frontline professions. 
for Idaho, our wastewater operator of the year, Philip Carl Shaw, City of Idaho Falls, and collections, Brian Bates, City of Blackfoot. For Oregon, Wastewater Operator of the Year, Spencer Goodrow, and Collection System Operator of the Year, Ryan Wood. And for Washington, Western Washington, Operator of the Year, Boric Busta from Lawn. And I don't, I don't think Boric is here. Our final award, Woman of the Year Award. It is our honor to recognize women who have excelled in their career, have moved water issues forward, and have mentored young women in our industry. I'm not going to say how long I've known this next wordy, because um, that would be embarrassing for both of us. So there you go. But it is this great pride that PNCWA recognizes this year's Woman of the Year as Lori Pierce. I'll just say we were both pretty new to the industry when we first met. <laughs> okay, our, our uh, Northwest Regional Scholarship winners. Um, I don't think they're here, but I'll just read their. Do we have a slide for you? One of them's here. Geneva. Is Geneva here? Hey, all right. Grace, Gonzaga, hometown. Let's go Bulldogs, Let's go Zags. Now, in our part of the country, that's the closest thing we have to a professional team. So we root hard for the, for the uh, out of order. Willow University of Idaho, Willow. For Vandals. Josh with Portland State University. Matt with Montana State University. I'm currently sending that school checks every month. So thank you, Matt, for taking some of that. And Tyler from the South Dakota School of Mines. And Maya from Stanford. <laughs> and <laughs> Matt Nason accepting on behalf of Maya, putting that money back in your wallet. And Austin from WSU, let's go kooks. Okay, with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Rob Lee, our current president. 
Okay, uh, so I get the privilege of handing out a few awards uh, to a few uh, special individuals. Um, like, I, like I shared at opening general session, what a year it's been. Um, and I cannot sing the praises of two special individuals enough. Uh, Vicki Hollingsworth and Jeff Schmidt, our committee, our conference chair and our technical program chair. Um, one thing that I think COVID taught all of us, we could not escape coming face to face with our own mortality, right? That's like, oh my gosh, what is the world about to come up with? Um, and life is short. And I think many of us, and probably all of us had to reevaluate how in the world are we gonna spend the time that we have knowing that life is finite. It's something we all had to face. And that's what makes this recognition so special. Um, two amazing people took that opportunity to roll their sleeves up and said, you know what? This industry, this association is worth it. And so I think the amount of hours and the time and energy and heartache that you put in, the, the sacrifice your family's made, um, it just was more than anyone could have ever expected under these circumstances. Um, so Vicki Hollingworth, uh, Jeff Schmidt, thank you for your dedication, your service, your sacrifice, truly a representation of the rabbit in the moon. So please, would you, uh, Vicki, Jeff, would you come join me and please thank them for all of their service and hard work. Your, your awards are on their way, uh, supply chain issues. Your flowers didn't have enough water. So we um, are privileged to give you some, some wine. Okay, I want to take a moment to recognize outgoing board members. Um, board terms are quite a commitment, um, and we have four individuals I'd really like to thank for their tremendous service. Haley Falconer, uh, past president, uh, Jenny Coker, our secretary, Christy Steiner, WEF delegate, and Andrew Matsumoto, SNYP representative. If I could ask the four of you to please stand and be recognized for your amazing service. And uh, before I ask our incoming president to join me up here, I would like to ask all of the PNCWA past presidents uh, in the room to please stand and be recognized for your past service. Thank you for your always continuing contributions, past presidents. Okay, one last award I wanted to give out. Uh, there is an award called the President's Award. It's an award that the president is allowed to select and give out on his own or her own um, in appreciation for any specific individual for outstanding service to the association. And I think about the countless people who have given so much to the association. And I'm constantly amazed at the sacrifice and the time that people have given many of who are in this room today. And I know many of you may go and not be fully recognized for, for all of the time and sacrifice you've made. Um, but I also recognize as I'm rolling into my 50s, um, I am slowly declining in my metabolism. My ability to sleep in has completely gone away uh, and my memory is declining. And so with all of that, it's okay, well, how do we not forget what certain individuals have, have really given and done? Um, so 
I think the hardest time to give of yourself is when things are the most trying. Uh, and then <clears throat> life will sometimes throw curveballs, as it's done for all of us. Um, but there is a special individual where life threw a lot of curveballs at her this past year. Um, and when the walls come pressing in, every once in a while, you'll see a rabbit come along. And there's a backstory behind it. If you were wondering about the rabbit and the moon thing, there is a rabbit that comes along who runs out, even in the face of all of that, does what they can and gives whatever last they can give. I've seen firsthand the, this, this individual's contributions uh, in my time here engaged with PNCWA, just a few ways that this individual has given to the association. This person's elevated uh, with a lot of energy and sacrifice, the Women of Water Group, including uh, putting on Women of Water Symposiums, really speaking on behalf of, of those who didn't have much of a voice here at the conference or in the association. Uh, she helped initiate the 2020 Summit Series uh, in the middle of a crazy pandemic when we really thought we didn't know how we were gonna survive financially as an association. And that helped kept, keep the association going. She was part of a group that helped reimagine our mission and vision statement, which is really setting this framework of where we are going in the future. Uh, she was a catalyst, really a catalyst in, in driving forward our successful search for our managing director. Such a sucker for punishment, but also an amazing sacrifice, not just one, but two stints on the board. And she did all of this um, through some really, really hard circumstances. Uh, that I can't even imagine. So it's a little unusual. I don't know if this is done before, but it's, I'd love to have Laura Kamrick join me on the stage uh, to receive the President's Award for outstanding service to the association. All right, so Laura, um, I am so pleased to be able to serve one more year on the board, but not as the president, um, uh, to be able to support you in any way I can uh, to help you have an amazing year. So I actually hope you get the chance to use this more in person than, than we were able to do this past year. But Laura, my extreme privilege to pass this gavel to you. You have to stay. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Laura Kamrick. Uh, that was a real big surprise. I didn't see that coming. I'm pretty proud of myself for holding it together. I did have my eyes sort of tear up there for a second. Um, before I get into just doing a little close, um, I want to take the opportunity to thank Rob for his leadership as president um, of the board for the past year. You guys know Rob's style, right? He's inviting, he's compassionate, he's incredibly grateful. And that is what he did for us on this board this entire year. I have so many fun stories to share about him. But what I really wanna share with you is that I've never been on a board where we started every meeting with a poem. Yeah, I mean, I mean did you hear me a poem? Yeah, so Rob thought it'd be really fun if we learned more about each other, not just who we are in our business, but who we are personally. So he created this Mad Lib poem where you fill in the words along the way and every board meeting, a board member would do their poem. And I thought it was the craziest thing ever. But then I was so looking forward to each board meeting every month to hear the new poem from each of our team members and learn about them. Learn about their oak trees and their candles and their hand crocheted blankets and rabbits. So um, Rob, this board was so grateful to have you. You have 25 hours in every single day and I don't know how you do it. 
but we are so grateful for your service. Thank you. Okay, so officially I asked Rob to say some closing remarks and he said no. Okay, so here I am back again. Um, this, this, this little close is supposed to be inspirational, but this is not inspirational. This is gonna be more informative. So I want you guys to know a little bit about me coming in as your president, about what I value and what I hope to do this year. So I'm gonna start with something small. Um, I work for Corolla Engineers in Seattle. Um, I'm a senior project manager, and I love working with utilities. Before becoming a consultant, I worked for both a county and a city. And so I spent 11 and a half years on that side of the, of the world. And there was nothing I loved more than taking care of my clients and my customers and all those people that needed water and wastewater. And that's actually what drives me today to be who I am, because my job and my role as a consultant is my hobby. I love what I do. My real job is being a mom and being a wife. And I have two kids, and I'm very sad to say they're both in college this year, and my house is very quiet. I also helped raise a niece and nephew, and so now the house of four is as a house of zero little kids. But that's okay because now I can reflect every morning on my morning walks about what's important to me, try to get a few minutes for my husband when he comes home at night before he flips his laptop open or turns on CNN. But what I love to think about is that those kids and my real job as a mom is what this water world is all about. It's making a space for the future for their kids and their future kids. It's really not about me. It's not about the fact that I went to Gonzaga right across this river. It's not about the fact that I got an MBA at Seattle University, but it's about my passion for making the world a better place for my children's children. And if you get to know me, you will know that I'm incredibly passionate about my job in water because this is really my hobby. I like to spend my extra time volunteering at high schools and middle schools, teaching kids about water. I love and love diversity, worrying about women, worrying about everyone out there to be created equal so everyone has a chance for clean water. And this is how I got to where I am today at PNCWA. Some people would say it's all John Phillips's fault by asking me to be his conference chair in 2018 in Vancouver and then quickly going on the board right after. And maybe there's a little bit of truth to that, that it's all his fault, but it was really that my, for my passion for this by, as you saw, like serving on the wards committee, really putting my energy into this woman of water and making this be part of our annual tradition. Um, I've served on awards, I've served on leadership and just trying to give everything that I love. But that's not really why I'm standing up here. I'm not standing up here for you to learn more about me. I'm standing up here to talk to you about your organization and your association that you're so proud about. So that's what I want to do is I want to make sure that we really are the association that has a vibrant within our communities and is thinking about the healthy watersheds of the future. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing we're going to do next year is really integrate our new managing director into everything that we do. Some of us remember the days of Nan and Mike. We remember the days that things just happened. And then we had this small break where there was a lot of people who rolled up their sleeves and did a lot of extra work. And so we're really excited for the opportunity to have that managing director be a new version of Nan and Mike. So what else are we gonna do next year? We're gonna continue to increase our member engagement. And that's about you. And I know, I already know, you guys are busy, right? You're on Teams calls, your phones are beeping. And right now, half of you are looking at your you know, phones right now wondering when is she gonna wrap this up so I can get out there to the bars with my friends. So this is what we wanna do. We're gonna follow along the lines of WEF and we're gonna create communities of practice. 
We are gonna group our committees together so that you guys can collaborate, tell stories and learn from each other and maybe get some CEUs. We're gonna to cross together our committee so that we can work together and not work individually. This is gonna take a lot of effort. It's gonna take a lot of time, but I know you guys are gonna love it. Think of all the things that you can do when you're working together, not working single-handedly. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna do is I just wanna rekindle our passion for, for water. I want everyone to think about that's the purpose of why we're here today. So many of you are what I would call hidden heroes. That's what I love to tell my kids when I go to elementary schools. Do you even know where your water goes? Do you know where your water comes from? Do you ever think about those people every single day? Well, you're at home, they have to get up and go to work and make sure that we continue to have this amazing resource for the future. So you are my hidden heroes. You are my children's hidden heroes. And that's why you're here. And that's why we wanna rekindle the spirit. So the last thing I wanna leave you with is how can you help? What can each of you do for your association? Well, the first thing you guys can do is you can educate. You can spread the word of water. We have many different platforms for doing this. Small little write-ups in the digest. You can do a WebEx. You can do a workshop. You can present next year. The second thing I need you to do is inspire. I want you to encourage other people to follow in our footsteps, to have a workforce for water, for, for our future. The third thing, collaborate. Provide opportunities to talk and share and learn from one another. Each of you has a story and your neighbor next to you really wants to hear it. And you wanna engage and you wanna cultivate and you wanna have a membership that's looking for the future. And that future is about innovation. Innovation is promoting technologies and approaches that allow us to have clean water for the future. And the last thing, we just really wanna exchange ideas and promote that we are the hidden heroes and we are taking care of our future generations. So thank you for giving me this opportunity to be your president for the next year. I can't wait to see all of you in Tacoma and we're gonna have an amazing conference. So thank you guys. Oh, so before I let you go, I would like Bud to come up and join me. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, all right, I'm on. Here he comes. You guys like his new white shirt? Yeah, I dressed up. Yeah, and I see you your red shoes on tonight instead of your black ones. You got it from here? I suppose so. We'll see if we can get this done so everybody can go. All right. One more time with feeling. All right. <laughs> Don't get me started. PNCW members, PNCWA members, <clears throat> and distinguished guests. At this time, we would like to present the austere and magnanimous portion of the banquet, where once again, we observe those solemn and hallowed moments where we recognize, recognize those intrepid individuals who are the exponents of ultimate disposal. The Select Society of Sanitary Sludge Shovelers, known as the five S's, the name has not been changed to reflect the name change to biosolids because that would mean we would be BS shovelers. We refuse to even acknowledge that which is eminently obvious. Selection to the membership is not an award, but it is to recognize outstanding meritorious service above and beyond the call of duty. 
to the Pacific Northwest Clean Water Association and its members. Selection bestows the accolade of being elevated on the official shovel to the highest ridge of the sludge bed with the title of Select Society of Sanitary Sludge Shovelers. With all the honor, atmosphere, prerequisites, and dignity appertaining thereunto. This being the 77th year that this prestigious honor has been bestowed upon the select of PNCWA. The original chapter of the Select Society of Sanitary Sludge Shovelers was founded in Arizona in October of 1940. Although in 1937 in Pennsylvania, it was known as the Hi-Hat Society. I don't know how they got that name, but that's what it was. There are no dues, no, no officers, except the influent integrator, the pH neutral pH seven. Their duties are to record and report selections, present official certifications of elevation, bestow badges and preside over these solemn and most impressive ceremonies. At this time, I would like to have members of the Select Society of Sanitary Sludge Shovelers bring forth the nominees for inoculation. Be brave of heart and come forth to the podium to be duly inoculated into our society. Take your time. It's drawn out for drama. Sorry, I don't tap dance anymore. I can't see anything beyond about five feet in front of here. So got to see who all's showing up. Okay. We have Jeff Wall the VP of Sladen with over 30 years of construction experience. The two, since 2019, he's been the chair of the construction committee. He's energizing and drawing new membership to that committee. Uh, construction and alternative delivery track is now a main, mainstay of the conference and, ha, and was one of the six summit series during the pandemic. Jeff's work with construction committee has added an important voice to our water community. Hunter Bennett Daggett, communications committee chair for, for four years. Exceptional example of leadership, delivering consistent activities, strong engagement, leading through collaboration, leads adopt a school, reviews Stockholm Junior Water Prize submissions, and leads the annual communications camp. William Leaf, or Bill, I guess. 2015 conference technical chair on the scholarship committee presented at 13 PNCWA conferences, SWIOS and CIOS conferences and Oregon Short School. Andrew Matsumoto, dedicated PNCWA and WEF rock star. That's how, that's how I got the bio. Former YP committee chair, outgoing YP board rep, Vice Chair of the WEF AWWA YP Summit and the is going to be the 2023 conference chair. Caitlin Dwyer, utility manager for the city of Arlington, 
president of the Northwest Section, active in Govern Government Affairs Committee, and has made multiple trips to DC in person and virtual to advocate for our issues in, in the Pacific Northwest. And, and of course, Amy, our WEF representative here, we always like to bring them into the fold when they come close. And uh, she's on the WEF Board of Trustees as Vice President, uh, COO of Providence Engineer, past president of the Louisiana, Louisiana Water Environment Association. And Amy is famous for her feelings. <laughs> So now that we have them all here, I think I got everybody, didn't I? Okay, don't want to leave anybody out here. Okay, there are some rules of conduct and rituals which must you must learn to enable you to carry off this great honor with dignity and elegance. Firstly, we need to figuratively put on our rubber boots. So we're all going to be putting on our rubber boots now. Okay, we got them on. We're ready for some serious stomping here. Next, the grip. The grip is made by curling the fingers as low, placing them around the handle of the shovel. The grand hailing sign is made by raising the grip head high, thumb, and thumb to the left, and lowering smartly, thus symbolizing the close relationship between water, wastewater, and the environment in which this association is vitally concerned. The signal of distress is a sweeping motion made with both hands as if shoveling. The chosen station of the select sanitary sled shoveler is leading the charge when everything has just hit the fan. The password is derived from the first two letters of the shovelers. It's pronounced shh. Okay, here we go. Will all the five S's please stand and repeat the signs with the inductees. The grand hailing sign raised, grip head high, thumbs to the left, lowering smartly. The signal of distress, sweeping motion made with both hands as if shoveling. And of course the password is shh. I, you ha I guess you have your shovels and your buckets, but you haven't got your certificates. I'll do that. Okay. I'll find them here. Andrew? Thanks. Okay. Who am I looking for here? Yeah. 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 Top one there. There you go. Hunter. Amy. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't know who to shake anymore. Well, let's finish this up. Now all the dirty work is done here. This, the, the certificate being presented to you is signed by the Influent Integrator as PH7 with signatures from 12 other members for the remaining concentrations from PH1 through PH13. The official badge represented by the shovel, has been bestowed upon you is symbolic of your deep standing or your standing in it deeply. The gold shovel with the salmon emblem with the distinctive salmon rep representative of the Pacific Northwest is to be worn on your left lapel or as a tie clasp. And we are also going to be generating other shovel options uh, here in the near future. So there will be uh, pins and other things that are also viable alternatives coming soon. All association functions 
and meeting. You're to wear these at all associating meetings and functions to indicate a member in high regard. Failure to wear this pin at such a function will result in a fine, which will be con contributed to the fund for the functions of the society. Most people like to know who, who is a 5S, so they might keep their proper distance. This, of course, is out of respect. And by the powers vested in me as Influent Integrator, I hereby declare to you to be life members of the Select Society of Sanitary Sludge Shovelers. Thank you for your dedication and your contributions to the association and shovel on. Send me an email so I can get you on the mailing list. Absolutely. Yeah, so I can get you on the mailing list. All right, well, thank you everyone for coming to our awards uh, uh, banquet tonight. It was a pleasure to see all of you. Please go and have um, a great rest of your conference. Say hi to all your friends. And I would like to the past presidents to please come forward. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.